Hi, this video is on current dividers and it's part five. So in this one, uh, I have a current divider here. Oh, where's my mouse? I don't see it. Oh, here we go. So here is the current divider circuit right here. And I just added a resistor at the bottom just because. And sometimes your, uh, your teacher will do that just to throw in a wrench. But you know, it's okay. But in this, in this problem, what we're gonna solve for is, what's our two? We don't know what the resistance is here. We also don't know what the current is going through this branch. So we want to solve for that. So let's go ahead and get cracking on that. Uh, yeah, so let's just start off this and solve for the voltage on this resistor right here. So what is it? So in order to solve for the voltage here, we need to know first off the current, and we also need to know what the resistance is. And since we know what both of those are, we could just figure out what the voltage is there. So let's see. So the voltage on R3, which is this guy right here, is going to be equal to the current going through it, which is IT, times the resistance of R3. So IT is equal to 10 amps times R3, which is equal to 1 ohm. So the voltage on R3 is just equal to 10 volts. So now we got that. So now why don't we go ahead and solve for, uh, let's see, now we can solve for I2 or the current in this branch. So let me scroll down a bit. And to solve for that, we're actually going to use uh, the current, uh, a rule for current. So and this is going to be the current divider law. So you got the current, total current, is equal to I1 plus I2. And that's because the current coming through here, I1, is going to come to this uh, to this branch to this uh, connection right here, and the current from I2 is going to come into that same spot, and then it's going to go out right here. So that's why you have I1 plus I2 is going to be equal to IT or the total current. So let's plug in those values. We know what the total current is, and that's going to be equal to 10 amps, and we know I1 is equal to 4 amps. And we don't know I2. But since we know Kirchhoff's current law, we know that uh, these all have to add up. So I2 is going to be equal to 6 amps. You just and All you have to do is just move the 4 over here, and that'll, that'll give you the 6 amps. So now, how are we going to solve for this resistor? How are we going to solve for R2? In R2, uh, we could actually use one of the current... Uh, one of the rules for current dividers. And so when you're solving for, well, let me scroll back up. When you're solving for the current in this branch, you could actually use the, the ratio of these two resistors in order to give you the current here. What you do is you just, you, you uh, no, here, let me write it down so you can see. So the current, I don't worry about it. the current I2 is actually going to be equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 times the total current. And that'll actually give you the, the current in I2, but we already know this, and we already know R1, and we know the total current. The only thing we don't know is R2. So we're actually just going to use this equation to solve for R2. So first thing we do is uh, let's manipulate it. I'm going to multiply the, this current into it, so I'm going to get current's equal to R1 times IT over R1 plus R2. And at this point, I'm going to move R1 and R2 over to the left side. So I'm going to get I2 times R1 plus R2 is equal to R1 times IT. So now, what I, I want to solve for R2, and I need to get this isolated. So I'm just going to multiply this into here and in here, and I'm going to get R1 times I2 plus R2 times I2. And that's going to be equal to R1 times IT. So I2 times R1, that's this. I1 times R2, that's that. So I actually need more space. Let's scroll down some more. Uh, so now I want to solve for this R2, so I need to just isolate it. So let's go ahead and move over this over to this side. So we're going to get 
R2 times I2 is equal to R1 times IT minus R1 times I2. And now we're, we're nearly there. We just need to bring this I2 over to this side. We're going to get R2 is equal to 1 over I2 times R1 times IT minus R1 times I2. And now, at this point, all we need to do is just uh, plug and chug. So let's just plug in the values and we can solve for this. So I2 is equal to 6 amps. R1 is equal to 1 ohm. IT is equal to 10 amps minus R1, which is 1 ohm. I2, which is 6 amps. And uh, let's see, so that's, this is going to be 10, and this is going to be negative 6, so that's going to be 4. So this is going to be equal to, oh, I need to scroll down some more. This is going to be equal to, let's see, R2 is equal to 4 over 6 ohms. So now we've now we've solved for this resistor and we've solved for this current. So let's see. Now okay, so we could solve for the voltage across this guy. And there's quite a few ways you could do that. But I'm just gonna go with this method. Hold on a second, scroll down. So now let's solve for the voltage on resistor 1, and that's going to be equal to the current I1 times R1, and that'll give you the voltage there. The current going through it was 4 amps times uh, R1, and that was 1 ohm. So the voltage on resistor 1 is going to be equal to 4 volts. And we can do the same thing again in order to get the voltage on R3. That's going to be equal to uh, Let's see, the total current times R3. Now let me just, oh, we got, here we go. Wait a minute, I already solved for this. Yeah, I don't need to solve for this again, so sorry. Yeah, so that's that's how you get that one. Uh, but now we, we want to solve for the total voltage across here. So what's the voltage in? And I think that's going to be the, that's the rest of it, so. Uh, just ignore this, not that, we're not doing that. So let's see, the total voltage, the voltage in, is going to be equal to the voltage uh, that's in parallel, or you could just say the voltage in R1, plus the voltage in R3. Uh, and the reason I could do that is, uh, well, let, me, let me finish this and then I'll show you. So the voltage on VR1 was equal to 4 volts. And the voltage on VR3 was equal to 10 uh, to 10 volts. So the total voltage in is equal to 14 volts. Now, let me show you why. So from here to here, these two uh, branches are going to share the same voltage. And that's just because they're in parallel. And whenever you have resistors in parallel, they always have the same voltage. Uh, and so that's, that's why you just get that voltage from here. And then I could just add it to uh, add this voltage here plus the voltage across these two, and you're going to get the total voltage in. And that's what we did because we said the voltage on this resistor right here, which is the same as the voltage on this guy, plus the voltage on this resistor, would give you the total of 14 volts coming in. Because here you have four volts, and here you have 10 volts. So there you go. So anyhow, I really hope you liked the video. Um, uh, if you did, please like it, and uh, good luck in your classes.